Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome to New Day Christian Center. Amen. Man, Amen. Spirit Amen. of God. Yes, give the Lord a great big hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is not our normal service message. The Spirit of God fell on me this morning while I was in prayer. Uh, I pray whether I'm going to minister that week or not. I pray every day. Amen. And I did not know the chain of events that were taking place in our nation until I heard it on the news as Pastor Darlene and I were driving to church together. Right now, as we stand in this holy ground, consecrated unto the Lord, on a day that the world consecrates as the day to worship God for most people, Sunday. They are having a gay, lesbian, LBGTYZ out loud and proud parade in New York City. Now the Lord spoke to me before I had the knowledge of what's going on in our nation right now as we gather together. Amen. Organized, radical, anti-God, demonic, parades to wave their rebellion in the face of the God that formed this nation. Now, what we normally do is pray for an hour in New Day Christian Center every Sunday as a family before we get into the Word, before we get into praise and worship. Amen? Amen. 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 Lord God. But today, the Spirit of God fell on me. He said, I want you to open up. I, will, I, I want to speak to my people, I want to speak to the church. And in speaking to the church, if they have ears to hear, I'm speaking to the nation. Amen. Now remember, folks, that when the elections were going on, and Donald Trump was voted in as the president of this nation, I stood here under the prophetic utterance of the Holy Spirit and said, not to put your confidence in the arm of flesh. Yes. Yes. Not to put your confidence in the arm of government. Not to depend on man to bring salvation and deliverance and restoration to America. Do you remember that? Yes. Yes. It's on YouTube if you care to research it. Amen. And it'd be along the same time as the elections and President Trump being elected if you want to research and find out if I was speaking by the Spirit of God. Many of you here in this church know that I do speak as under the anointing of God, and I do speak Amen. by the Spirit of God, and God has begun to set me apart as a prophet. Amen. 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 And I believe that what he's saying to me now, with great urgency, and just fell on me like a blanket from heaven. He also spoke to me and said, Be not deceived. The, the message that I placed on your heart two years ago, to call the people of God back to the old pathways, back to the old hedges, back to the old highways, back to the ways of holiness and consecration, back to the old standards of the Bible. He said, you did not make that up in your mind. That is my heart, calling my people out of Babylon and out of Hornets, back to their first love, Jesus Christ and the cross. Yes. Amen. 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 Because I have fought every devil in hell for two years over that message alone. Amen. Amen. And then today that same anointing came on me and said, I want you to lead prayer. I want you to talk to my people. And I want you to declare this from heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Spirit of God came on me. It's, the Spirit of God spoke and said, I want you to look at Amos chapter 6. And as you're turning there, I want to say this. that Since the prophetic word went out to America, as Donald Trump took the office, the highest office in the land, in man's eyes, the highest office in the land is the throne room of heaven. Amen. 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 And I spoke by the Spirit of God. God spoke to us as a church worldwide and said, do not put your confidence in the flesh. Don't put your confidence in government. I'm only allowing this man to sit over your nation as a stopgap of the waves of hell. And he said, 
Have I not said that when the enemy comes in like a flood, I would raise up a standard against him? He said, Donald Trump is my standard as long as Donald Trump speaks what I want him to speak and does what I want him to do. It is a small, very short window of time. And in that window of time, Donald Trump is in the office of the White House as the president of this nation under God Amen. for a very short season. And the purpose is not to bring deliverance and make, listen to me, don't confuse the message with the purpose. Most people always mess up the message and do not get the purpose of God done. Make America great again was really meant make Jesus Christ great again. Amen. And when you make Jesus Christ great in America again, America will be great again. Amen. And as long as Donald Trump keeps putting Jesus Christ and God first over this nation, this nation will be great. But it's only for the time to bring America to a full, broken-hearted repentance back to God. Amen. Amen. And as he was speaking this to me today, he was giving me a mandate to call the church first and foremost back to a spirit of prayer. Amen. Because America, since Donald Trump has gotten into the White House, has become more rebellious. They have not repented. They have not bowed their knee to the will of God. They have resisted and set their jaw against the will of God. And the testimony that I heard from God was on the radio that they're having massive in-your-face parades again, saying, we will not obey God. We will be as perverted as we, as we want to be. Amen. In the largest city of this nation, they've lit up the White House in rainbow colors, and now they're marching in mass in New York City, saying, we will not obey your God. We rebel openly against your, your God. And listen, their motto is be loud and be proud. And that's exactly what has stirred the Spirit of God on this man of God to speak to the church of God. While everybody's rebelling against God open and openly, violently, with, with hostility and hate against God and everything that God stands for, the church is still in Disneyland. Amen. Amen. The church is still looking for happy times in make-believe world and just everything in my life, as long as I'm comfortable and I'm blessed, let everybody else go to hell. They have not obeyed the call of God to come back to their first love. Amen. 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 When we started this church, I said, above everything else, God's told us, you will pray. Amen. If we never preach another message, we'll pray. If we never have another healing line, we'll pray. If we never have another prophetic utterance, we'll pray. If they come by the thousands, we'll pray. If nobody comes, we'll pray. Because the heart of God is get on our knees. If my people that are called by my name will seek my face and repent and cry out to God, then I will heal their land and not one day before. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God does love America, but he will not restore America without repentance. And repentance and all the moves of God begin in the house of God. Amen. So what God's calling to the church for is true, brokenhearted, direction-turning repentance. Amen. Amen. To where the love in your heart changes. The affections of your heart change. And that changes the direction of your lives and activity in church. Amen. Amen. God's calling the church to prayer. God's calling the church to repentance. And nobody wants to hear that. I want to be in my make-believe world. Make my make-believe confessions and let everything else go by me on fire as long as I walk in covenant blessings. Are covenant blessings true? Absolutely. Can you hang your eternal life on every covenant blessing of God? Yes. But God said, seek first the kingdom of heaven 
and His righteousness, then all these things will joyfully from heaven be added unto you. Amen. And we have pursued like whoredoms and prostitutes the things and the stuff and the acceptance of the world and turned our back on the covenant of loving God first. Yes. Yes. And the call of God's heart is come back to me. Come back to me in repentance and come back to me on your knees in prayer. And call out to me and put the healing of your land before the inheritance of your covenant promises. My Father knows you have need of these things. He knows what you need before you open your mouth. He knows what you need before a tear forms in your eye. He knows what you need before shaking and stuttering and stammering of fear comes up in your heart. God, your Father knows what you need. Love Him and serve Him and come home to God. Say Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'd like for you to look at Amos chapter 6. I'm going to read four scriptures and I'm going to keep it short because the point is pray. Amen. Even if you don't preach so much, pray. Even if you don't teach so much, pray. Even if you don't sing so much, pray. Yes. Amen. And I'm here to tell you by the Spirit of God, the real church is the church that prays. Amen. Amen. Not the church that saves, not the church that dances, not the church that claps but the church that prays. Amen. 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 You know how you can gauge the, the, the true backbone of a church? I've said this for years, and it's absolutely true. This is the eighth church I find here. And this is the only church that prays before we ever do anything else. Amen. Because I finally got to the place where I don't care if I'm accepted anymore. Amen. I don't care if I'm liked anymore. Amen. I don't care if I go to lunch with Jerry Seville or Kenneth Copeland or any of the famous preachers like Amen. I have before. I don't care. I'm done. I don't care what man thinks of me. I want to stand in his face. I want to be able to bow at his knees. And dear God, all I want to hear is, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. I don't care about the acceptance of man. Should I please man or should I please God? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. And be not deceived. It's always a revenant that performs and manifests the will of God. Yes. Amen. Now who will choose to turn their back on this world, take up their cross, Amen. fall on their knees, and fight the good, the true good fight of faith and prayer? Yes. Whoever that will be will be the minority, but they will be well received in the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 Listen to the warning from the prophet Amos in chapter 6, verse 1. As the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, look at Amos 6, 1. Listen to what it says. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion and trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named chief among the, among the nations, to whom the house of Israel came. Woe be unto us if we're seeking ease and comfort and security in natural things when God's calling us to war. Yes. Amen. Yes. Woe unto us if we're at ease and we're comfortable and we're secure and our needs are met when God's calling the, God, the, the army of God to battle. Amen. Woe to those that are ease at ease when God's calling them to a different direction. Woe to those that say, we're on the mountain of Samaria. We've got a covenant with God. We're covenant people. When God said, I want warriors. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. The first admonition of the Spirit of God right now to our nation and to our church is stop waving around what God has promised and start getting into the heart of God, which is service. Yes. Amen. 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 I rejoice when God blesses His people. Amen. I rejoice when our precious handmaiden drove to church today and parked a brand new car. Amen. I rejoice when I see women of God come in with beautiful new purses and adorned with the blessings of the Lord. But it breaks my heart when the church lives for that. Amen. Amen. And it breaks the heart of your Father. Amen. And woe to us when things and places and comfort and peace 
at ease is the beat of our heart when God said, rise up and save the nation. Amen. Amen. Now I want you to look over with me to Jeremiah chapter 6. We covered this in fellowship yet last Sunday after church. The Spirit of God said, I want the world to hear this. Amen. I want the other churches that praise my name this day to hear this. Amen. I want you to lay out step by step what I told you two years ago. And I did not know this even existed until the Spirit of God led me to it two weeks ago. Amen. And it absolutely outlines a spiritual blueprint of what God spoke to me, confirmed in His Word, where we're at prophetically, where the church is at, what the purpose of God is for, and what we should be doing. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Look at somebody say, I'm ready to receive. I'm ready to receive. Speak from heaven, Father God. Speak from heaven, Father God. Touch my heart that I might change. Touch my heart that I might change. Say that with me all over the world. Speak to me, O oh God. Speak to me, O oh God. Touch my heart, Holy Spirit. Touch my heart, Holy Spirit. Change the purpose of my life. Change the purpose of my life. That I might be pleasing to my Father in heaven. That I might be pleasing to my Father in heaven. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The children of God as usual, the children of Israel as usual, have gone into a series of rebellion against God. And this is the number one warning of the Spirit of God to His church right now. More people backslide when they're blessed than when they're under attack. Amen. When God blesses a nation, they inevitably always forget who brought them to the pinnacle of success, power, and blessing. And America has long forgotten that America was established for God. They don't even recognize that America is a Christian nation anymore. The vast majority don't want God running this nation. And God said, you better remember who brought you this power, Amen. who brought you this wealth, who brought you Amen. these blessings, who brought you these massive fields of wheat and barley and oil and riches that no man can possess. It was God Almighty that blessed this country. And it's God Almighty that's about to curse it. Yes. Amen. Amen. As we have long since forgotten who did this great thing among us. Amen. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They had forgotten. Look at verse 3. Well, let's just start at verse 1. O oh, you children of Benjamin, gather yourselves to flee out of the midst of Jerusalem and blow the trumpet of Tekoa and set up a sign of fire in Blessed Syrah. For evil appeareth out of the north. Now, folks, I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, for a year and a half I have seen evil on the horizon for this country. And we're still having seminars. And, and crusades on how to be blessed of the Lord, how to walk in prosperity, how to get your, your end time transfer of wealth. At the end times when God said, there's evil coming, look up, your redemption draws nigh, watch and pray. Yes. We're having seminars on end time increase of abundance and not the increase of the, the, the wheat fields of God. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, when you see these things, creeping on the horizon, when you see them begin to take place, look up, watch, and pray that you be not deceived. Amen. For I am at the door. Don't look for more stuff. Look for me coming. Amen. Don't look for money coming. Look for me coming. Amen. Don't look for the end time transfer of wealth coming. Look for me to come. What are you going to do? Build a $6 million house a day before the rapture? Right. Amen. Amen. I believe in prosperity, but we have turned our affection to prosperity and forgot the God that prospers us. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Folks, I'm standing here right now with a Mont Blanc. This is the second Mont Blanc pen somebody gave me. This is a collector's Mont. This is an $800 pen. The $400 pen I gave to Darlene. This is as, almost as expensive as you can get. How did I get it? Oh, I prayed it in. I never even thought it in. Amen. I 
I'm standing there and a, and a Christian man came up and said, you know, I saw this in my drawer. God told me to bring it to you. Praise God. How did I get the other one? A Christian man said, you know, I've got this thing. I bought it. I've used it three times. I don't even like it, but God told me to give it to you. Amen. You, don't have to, you don't have to pursue anything. Your Heavenly Father knows how to touch your heart with blessings if you sell out to His heart. Yes. Amen. Amen. I go on and on and on. And, you know, a person gave. Remember that Rolex watch I used to wear? Yeah. We sold it. We sold it for three thousand dollars and gave the money to a needy couple. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know what I always wanted, but I would never pursue, never prayed about it, never thought about it. I always wanted a Rolex watch. And a guy come up and gave me a Rolex watch, a real one. I went and had a check. It was real. And you know what God said? You like it? Yeah, I like it. Wear it for a while, but it's not yours. Amen. Enjoy it. I did. Board the church for what? About three or four months? God said, now sell it. Give it to a, a couple who need some money. And that's exactly what we did. Praise God. God don't want man. God does not care. God can give you 35,000 Rolex watches tomorrow. But the second your prayer life turns to Rolex watches, you have gone whoring after things. Right. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're having the most world famous preachers. All they talk about when destruction's coming on the north, from the north, on the horizon of our nation, is a transfer of wealth. The transfer of wealth. End time money. End time money. And you have missed the heart of God. Amen. God said, go out and win the souls. Go out and win the souls. My end time harvest is of souls. Amen. I want to have souls with me. I don't care about toys. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. We have a couple more minutes. Amen. Amen. Oh, ye children of Ed Benjamin, gather yourselves to flee out of the midst of Jerusalem. You know what you need to do? You need to get your heart out of the Babylonian system that runs America and flee out of that system. Yes. Amen. Amen. God's not calling us to leave America, but He's talking He's calling us to leave the spirit that controls America. Amen. Because destruction's coming. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Evil appeareth out of the north, and great destruction. Oh, brother, you're just gloom and doom. Hide your head under make-believe pillows and stare at the stars and make your wishes. You might as well say, twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. <laughs> Red Rover, Red Rover, send the blessings to my clover. That your prayers are silly when God said it's time to fight on your knees. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. Amen. Verse 2, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. She once was very beautiful. The church in America was the most beautiful entity in the in the entire world at one day, one time. When our heart burned with evangelism, when our heart burned to touch the nations with the cross of Jesus Christ, when we sent missionaries by the thousands instead of money in replacing of the missionaries. Come on. Verse 3, the shepherds with their flocks shall come under her. They shall pitch their tents again against her, around about her. They shall feed everyone in his place. Prepare ye war against her. Against who? The daughters of Zion, the church. And if you think that they're not gathering together militarily and financially and politically to eat, in our fields, you are still in make-believe land. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 4, prepare ye for war against her, the daughters of Zion, the people of God. The church in the United States is the most hated entity in the world. The church in the United States is the only thing that is stopping Antichrist from taking power. The church in the United States, as sick and dead and horror-filled in their hearts as they are, is the only thing that's keeping the one-world government at bay. The only thing that's keeping the one-world 
monetary system at bay. The only thing that precariously is fighting back the Antichrist establishing his throne is this wobbly, shaky, double-minded, fear-filled church that's still left. Amen. Brother, you don't got to yell. All prophets raise their voice like a trumpet when they see destruction coming. Yes. Everybody sleeping and nobody yes. wanting to wake themselves out of slumber. It's time to trumpet and get loud about the things of God and proud about the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Prepare ye for war against her. Rise up. Let us go up at noon. Woe unto us, for the day goes away, for the shadows of the evening are stretched out. We're getting into darkness. Arise, let us go by night, and let us destroy her places. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hew ye down the trees, cast out, cast a mount against Jerusalem. This is the city to be visited. Look at Pastor. Listen to me, world. The whole Antichrist system, the whole world, the Babylonian governments of this world have their focus on one thing. Jerusalem. Destroying and taking over and occupying and eating in the fields of the city of God. That's all they care about. Because Jesus has promised that he will set his throne in that city. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't it interesting that Antichrist and all his governments are focused on one thing, a lie, a rise, let us go up. For thus saith the Lord, hewn down the trees, cast a mount against Jerusalem. This is the city to be visited. She is wholly oppressed in the midst of her. The focus of all the world system is against one city, Jerusalem. Why do you think God said the church in our generation, number one on the list, pray for the peace of Israel? And we're at ease. We're completely asleep, fluffing our pillows, and don't you dare wake me up. Or you're harsh and unloving and full of doom and gloom. What are you doing, Pastor? I'm trying to say, thus said the Lord the way God said it to me so that our hearts might turn. Amen. Amen. And that by what he is birthing in this church, people might, by the grace of God, watch this, and their hearts be turned, and their churches be turned, and then a nation be turned. Hallelujah. Before it's too late. And darkness is here. Destruction is on the horizon of our nation. And it's time to get serious. Amen? Amen. 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 The whole world focuses to destroy one city. Where is the focus of the church? For thus saith the Lord, while they look to destroy, we should be on our knees looking to heaven on behalf of Israel to protect and preserve until that appointed day. Amen. Verse 7, as a, as a fountain casts out her waters, so cast out her wickedness. Violence, violence and spoil is heard in her. In who? Israel. Who's it heard in now? Violence and spoil is heard where? More than anywhere else in the world. In America. We're the number one propagators of pornography in the world. We're the number one pro, 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 uh, propagators of of sexual perversion, homosexuality, and lesbianism in the world. We are opening the floodgates of perversion through America to the entire world. Our wickedness springs out from the midst of us. Yes. Amen. Amen. Violence and spoil is hurting her. Before, before me continually is grief and wounds. Be thou instructed, O listen, America, lest my soul depart from thee, lest I make thee desolate, a land not inhabited. I want to ask you one question. Why is it the only major government in the world?
world that's not mentioned in the book of Revelations is the United States. Israel's mentioned. Russia's mentioned. Jordan's mentioned. Saudi Arabia, Arabia's mentioned. All the Arab countries of Ethiopia is mentioned. All the major governments in the world are are mentioned by name and by emblem in the book of Revelations, except the United States of America. It might be because we don't exist by them. I'm not saying thus saith the Lord, but I'm telling you the Spirit of God said, come back to him, America. Filth and wickedness and perversion has sprung forth all over the world out of the midst of you, from your government, from your capitals, from the heart of your nation. Yes. Why? Because the church has first lost its heart for God. Amen. Amen. Verse 9, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall thoroughly clean the remnant of Israel as a vine. Turn back thine hand as a grape gatherer into the basket. To whom shall I speak and give warning? Thus saith the Lord. The Spirit of God saying to the church in the United States, Who am I going to give warning to? Who will listen to the voice of the Lord right now in the United States? What church? What people? What, what, which ones that name the name of Christ? Who is truly going to listen? Most have gone whoring after the lust of their flesh all over the United States. They're pursuing their own will, their own wants, their own desires, and not have fallen to their knees saying, God, what would you have us do? Verse 10, for whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised. Remember Jesus said, having ears to hear, they can't hear. Having eyes to see, they can't see. You can't hear what's being said right in front of your face, and you can't see what's happening right in front of your face. When Jesus walked among them, they thought he was just another man. When God spoke from heaven, they thought it was lightning. When the Spirit of God falls in Victory Meadows, Texas, you think it's just a crazy preacher making this stuff up. Verse 11. They cannot hear, let's back up in verse 10. They cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. My God, my God, my God, my God. If that doesn't describe the church in the United States, I don't know what does. Amen. When you say thus said, oh, I don't want to hear that. Right. But this is what the word says. Well, that, you're, that's just bondage. They have no delight in the instruction and correction and salvation of the uncompromised word anymore. Amen. Amen. I don't want to hear that, preacher. And I'll go someplace where I don't have to hear that. Right. Glory be to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Therefore I am full of fury, saith the Lord. I am weary with 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 holding in. I'm weary putting up with this rebellion. Just because we're under the spirit of grace, my dear brother and sister, don't you think for a minute God's still not going to judge sin. Amen. You think because we started out in covenant and in with union with the uncompromised word of God, with the cross of Jesus Christ, and established a government on the principles of the Ten Commandments, and have long gone whoring after every form of religion, after every form of government, after every form of doctrine, and played the whore with every make-believe imagination that comes along the ways of man. Do you think God will put up with that forever? No. I'm weary of holding this in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of the young men together. For even the husband and the wife shall be taken. The aged one with them they shall, that is full of days, and their houses shall be turned into, unto others. The things you're selling your souls to get, you're going to lose. Jesus said, what do you profit if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? Amen. So you can call bondage and doom and gloom preacher all, all you want. Everything in this prophetic warning of God was 
quoted by Jesus Christ in his day-to-day -day teachings. Amen. Yes. Amen. Don't serve things that rust and fall away, that moths chew up and eat. Serve and treasure those things that you can lay up in heaven where moth does not eat and rust does not corrode and thief cannot break in and steal. Amen. Why do you labor for that which perishes? Why do you labor for that when the judgment of God is at the door? Amen. Now remember, did I say God does not want you blessed? God just doesn't want you serving, loving, hanging on to, cleaving, and ignoring Him about the blessings. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The houses shall be turned unto others. What you labor for, somebody else is going to get. Verse 12. And with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. For from the east, from the least of them, even unto the greatest. Look at Pastor. Nobody's going to escape what's coming on the United States. You can't have enough money for what God is foreordained and will certainly come. You will not escape it. You can't hire enough security guards. You can't build high enough walls. You can't build strong enough safes. There's no way you can hide from God's wrath. Amen. For even unto the greatest of them, even, even everyone is given to covet. Listen to this. From the greatest to the least, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And I got news to you folks. I was raised word of faith. I was raised faith. Prosperity, authority, dominion, healing, deliverance. I was raised under all those doctrines. But there's a time when you have to move on with the current wave of God. And from the least unto the great, all you hear when you turn on the television, when you turn on YouTube, when you pull up a message from the television preachers, it's money, 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 houses, houses, houses. Stop things. Happy peace, happy peace. And you hear nobody calling the church to get prepared for war. Yes. Amen. Yes. While they're marching as militants in the street against God, we're still looking for happy places. Right. Come on, brother. And it's from the greatest clear down to the least. All you hear about is how to get blessed from God. You want to know what we should be seeking on our knees? How to bless God. Amen. For he that is faithful in the least of these things shall be blessed with more. Amen. From the least to the greatest, they've all been become greedy and covetous. From the prophets, even unto the priests, everyone deals falsely. Everyone preaches with ulterior motives. And the men and women that will stand up and say, Thus saith the Lord, and I love you, but I don't give a rip whether you like it or not. I love you, but I don't care if you like me. I love you, but I don't care if you ever come back. I love you, but it's completely irrelevant whether you applaud me. Those preachers have the smallest church and a bunch of crickets sitting in the pews. Because they disdain the word of God. I don't want to hear it. Don't you dare tell me I have to repent. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And I'll tell you something else right now for everybody that hasn't heard of me. When that woman right there started that this church with me, for four months straight, we preached to those walls. Nobody came to the door. Praise God. I'm a faith man. Then it all immediately turns to money and stuff. How about believing God to win souls? Amen. Amen. How about believing God that I might stand worthy on that day? That when I die and when I give up my last breath, I'm holding the cross. If he 
calls me home in the pulpit, I'm lifting Jesus high. If I die in my sleep, I'm sleeping and dreaming for another soul. How about if I stand in his presence with my heart and desire, being the lost of the world? Priests and the prophets are all greedy. Everyone deals falsely. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter. Well, you need healing. There's deliverance needs to come to the church. And it's just another ministry avenue to get stuff. It's a bless your darling heart. God understands. Just stay in the pew and keep giving. And you're not really interested in getting restored. You're not really interested in them getting delivered. You're not really interested in them getting healed. You just want them to act normal long enough to keep giving. Because when you're really healed, your heart returns to God. Amen. Amen when you're really healed, Jesus becomes your first love. When your core of your very being is restored and completely healed, you live for Christ and Christ alone. Amen. They have healed also the hurt of my daughters, of my people slightly. They haven't taken it seriously. Say, peace, peace, when there is no peace. I don't care how good the preaching has it, from this day till the rapture, listen to the church, stop it. There is no peace. Amen. The only hope of your peace is to walk in the spirit of peace. Yes. In the middle of the storm, and keep hand in hand with Jesus. Amen. And that's where your peace is. Amen. In the spirit of peace, not the spirit of the world, yes. not the governments of the world. In this world, you shall have tribulation, but be a good chair, Jesus Christ, yes. and in Him you're an overcomer of the world. Yes. Amen. 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 For thus saith the Lord, verse 16, listen very closely. Stand ye in the ways. What I'm doing right now is I'm getting on the path. I'm standing right in the way of you and your little happy parade to more stuff. Stand in the way and see and ask. Here's what you ask God for. Ask for the old ways. Remember I told you the Spirit of God said the, the end time new move of God is returned back to the old ancient ways of God. For I am the Lord God that changes not Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Go back to the Bible. Go back to the cross. Go back to Jesus Christ, the Savior, the baptizer of the Holy Spirit, the healer, and the soon coming King. Amen. 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 Stand in the, old, in the way and see and ask. Ask, ask. This is what you ask God for. The old pathways. The ancient ways of holiness. Where there is, that is the good way. And walk in it. And you listen. And then you'll find rest for your souls. Amen. Hallelujah. You want peace, peace. The only peace and rest you're going to find is back in a heart that walks with God. Amen. America, come back to God. You'll never have peace no matter who's in the White House. Till you get back to the ancient ways of God. Till you get back to the pathway of holiness. Till you get back to walking with the cross. Till you get back, get back to lifting Jesus Christ high. Till your heart wholeheartedly turns back to the old ways of God. First broken on your knees in repentance and prayers of crying out to God to restore and forgive and then you'll have peace. Amen. Amen. The old pathway is where there is the good way. Walk in it and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said we will not walk in them. Also, I have sent watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. Well, preachers are saying, I hear blessings on the horizon. I see a wave of prosperity coming. I hear the trumpet of the Lord 
Call it the army of God together in a heart of repentance and prepare for war. Yes. War for what? The war over the last souls that they might not go to hell. Yes. Amen. Amen. And how do you war over a church? In prayer. And then in preaching. Amen. And then in prophesying. Amen. Verse 18. Verse 17. Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. There's nothing changed, has it? Therefore hear you nations, and know, O generation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon the upon this people. Even the fruit, the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened to my words, nor to my ways, but they have rejected it. To what purpose cometh there to me your, with your incense? And the sweet came from far countries. Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices sweet unto me. Therefore thus saith the Lord, I will, what? Lay stumbling blocks before the people and their fathers and their sons to get to get gather shall fall together shall fall upon them. Their neighbor and their friends shall perish. You know what he's saying? Everything you're working for, everything you're laboring for, everything you love is going to be destroyed. What does a prophet man? What does it profit to sit in a prosperity church for 35 years just thinking of, i, I got to get the key to opening up the floodgates of heaven. And it's all you pursue clear up into the trumpet of God and the party of the eastern sky. The Spirit of God saying there's a turning he's calling for. There's a turning that he's calling for. There's a turning that he's calling for. Turn your hearts to God. Turn your hearts to His Word. Turn your hearts to the Spirit. Turn, 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 that you may not be destroyed with the wicked ones. Turn to prayer. Lift your eyes to heaven. Call out to God. Repent and fall on your knees, church. Repent and fall on your knees, church. Repent and fall on your knees and then get up and go out into the street full of the grace of God and the power of the Holy Ghost and wave your holy hand into the face of evil and say, Thus saith the Lord. And if I die, I die, but I'll die lifting Jesus higher. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory to God. Now let's stand to our feet and we're going to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you on behalf of America. We come to you on behalf of our nation right now. Oh God, they're, they're still in rebellion. They're still waving their fist in your face. They're still saying we will not allow God to tell us what to do. We will not allow you to tell us what the word says. We don't care what your dead religion says. Oh God, raise up a church in Moses. Let the fire of holiness fall on your church. Let repentance come on the church of America. Let us burn with the old fire of the old patriarchs and the old prophets and the old preachers and the old intercessors of all. Let us burn with the same holy fire, the same holy ghost set a fire in your church again, Father God. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, have mercy on America. Have mercy on the church, oh God. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Let the fire of heaven fall. Let the fire of heaven fall. Let the fire of heaven fall. God, grant with grace that your church would fall on its knees and cry out to you again. Cry for a visitation yes. of the Lord. Cry yes. 
Yes. For a visitation of the Spirit. Yes. Cry for a visitation of your glory. Oh, gosh, touch the church. Jesus. That we might touch America yes. while there's still time. Yes, Lord. Yes. Oh, God, we lift up Israel right now. Oh, Jesus, cover the nation of Israel with your blood. Let revival come to Israel. God, the churches of Jesus Christ that are in the cities of Israel, cause them to be set on fire. Cause the glory to fall on the churches. Cause them to rise up with prophetic utterance. Cause them to rise up with apostolic authority. Cause them to rise up with power and demonstrations. Cause them to go out into the streets of Jerusalem, the streets of Tel Aviv, the streets of all the cities of Israel, and preach Jesus Christ with fire. Yes, Lord. Let Israel yes, be saved. Lord. Yes, Lord. Let harvest come to Israel. Yes, Lord. Let Israel have protection by your angels and by the blood. Yes, Lord. Now, yes. God, we ask for you to anoint Donald Trump. Yes. So far, he's obeyed in his consciousness and in his flesh. He knows he was placed there only by divine intervention. I know that he knows. I know that he realizes there's no way, even with his gift of intellect and his gift of fortitude, no man can be that strong except the Spirit of God strengthen him. Yes. No man can have the wisdom to defeat all the forces of hell that above all other presidents, a wave of demonic attack that none have ever experienced. God strengthen him. Yes, Father. Yes. Let the Holy Ghost fall on him, baptize him with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Yes. That he might have the wisdom of the kingdom of God. That he might have the discernment of a prophet. That he might have the word from heaven for this nation. That he might rise up and say, I know that I no longer speak for the government, but I speak for the kingdom of God. Yes. Yes, Jesus. God, let glory flood the houses of Congress. Let glory fill the hallways of government. The repentance. And awakenings. You're pulling the scab off the corruption. As I prophesied, as you spoke to this church in prophetic utterance years ago, and said, if the veil was pulled back, you would not believe the pus and infection of filth in the government. And it is still being exposed by waves. God, expose it all. Yes. So that healing can come. Let the people of America see that no one is above the government of God. That no one can withstand the word of God and not suffer the consequences. That all those that have wagged their tongues and shaken their fingers and gathered in agreement against God, let it be brought down, oh God. Let it be brought down that they might repent in the streets of, uh, of America. Let it be brought down that they might repent in the streets of Washington, D.C. Let it be brought down that they might repent on the Capitol stairs. Let it be brought down in every government, capital, in every state of America, oh God. Let the fire fall and bring repentance to America. Jesus, thank you, Father. Father God, in Jesus' name, Jesus. breathe on your church. Yes. Breathe on your church like you breathe on this church. Congregation after congregation that will say, God, I want to fall in love with you more than anything, more than anybody, more than any place. Oh, God, fill me with my first love. Yes. Set a fire in my bones again that I wake up with joy to serve Jesus Christ, yes. no matter what the people look like. Breathe a fire-filled repentance in your church in Jesus' name. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. 
the time is so short. The time is at hand. The prophet saw and proclaimed. The apostles went and built. The early church died in Colosseums that we might stand here today. Oh God, we are the generation that they saw and rejoiced about. And we fell on asleep and we turned our backs on the ancestors that gave their lives for this day. And we have turned our backs on the Holy Spirit. And we have turned our backs on your Holy Word. Oh God, touch the church and bring us back to our first love and fill us with fire. In Jesus' name, Jesus that we no name. longer desire the cares of this world, and we no longer consider our lives dear unto us. Yes. 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 God sent revival to America. That we rise up once again as a church of unity, united around your word. Renite, renite. United around the cross. United around the great commission. With the go ye burning in our bones. With heaven clear and in focus as our only goal for tomorrow. That from this day forward, fire after fire after fire all over America rises up into a great explosion of light and love. And preaching of the gospel for end time harvest. Yeah, Raise up your church to preach and proclaim again, oh God. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Give me my hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.